I moved to Georgia when I was seven and grew up in Augusta, Georgia, where my parents still live. And as I've been traveling statewide for this campaign, I have loved every moment of reconnecting with folks who are living in Augusta, but also other parts of the state. My name is B. Wynn, and I'm a state representative here in Georgia. I represent House District 89, which is Atlanta and DeKalb. It's the seat that was formerly held by Stacey Abrams before she stepped up to run for governor. I am also a member of IBEW Local 613, and I'm the daughter of immigrants who fled Vietnam uh, for the same civil liberties that are under attack in our country today. I'm running for Secretary of State because of that very same reason. What we need is a Secretary of State who is on the side of people, who is pro-democracy, and who will uphold the will of the people and protect every Georgian's right to vote. Georgia has been at the top of everyone's minds, particularly as it relates to election integrity. Last year, the Secretary of State had to go up against the former President Trump to ratify the results of the 2020 election. How do you plan to make Georgia elections more transparent and fair while under the microscope of the nation? As Secretary of State, I would invest in voters, empower them, educate them, and remove the intimidation tactics and always, always be on the side of truth and facts, not just one time, but every single day of the year. Do you agree with Secretary of State Raffenberger's indicating that he would like to have law enforcement at the polls to protect the integrity of our elections? So what Secretary of State Raffensperger has called for placing state troopers in every polling precinct in Georgia does not solve any problems at hand. It does not make any voter feel more confident or safer, especially black Georgians, and it ignores the history of our country. Georgia has always been at the epicenter of the fight for voting rights. In recent years, the General Assembly in Georgia has passed laws that decrease access to the ballot and suppress the vote. How will you protect and expand Georgians' right to vote? As a sitting lawmaker, I have been at the table for these efforts to sabotage our elections and have been very upfront and vocal about fighting against these voter suppression bills. That means investing in our local election boards, all 159, with resources and equipment and protecting our election workers who are under stress and who are being attacked. That means investing in language translation, which Georgia has failed to do despite our diverse populations. That means investing in education and outreach and communications for voters, which the Secretary of State's office has failed to do. This year, Georgia enacted new district lines through a coordinated plan by the GOP to systemically water down the political strength of Black Georgians. Now, Black Georgians will have fewer opportunities to address the pressing needs in our communities. How will you make sure that Black voters have a seat at the table when it comes to decision making? Look, what we are seeing in Georgia is this attack on democracy that is meant to dilute the voices of black Georgians and other communities of color. And they're doing it through voter suppression, but they're also doing it through the subversion of democracy and through redistricting. And it's not ending. We know the congressional maps were passed, right? And, it, and they draw Lucy McBath out of the district that she flipped. But right now in the Georgia General Assembly, there's local redistricting going on. And Republicans are drawing maps in Cobb County, Gwinnett County to attack and remove elected officials who were duly elected, specifically black women. And so this is about ensuring that one, we invest in protecting the right to vote so that voters can elect the people of their choice. It is also about making sure that we uplift things like uh, nonpartisan independent redistricting committees it is about using litigation. It is about investing in the local groups who are doing the work on the ground to ensure that black voters count and that they have a seat at the table. Can you talk a little bit about your background and how it shaped your political career? As the daughter of refugees, uh, my parents' story has shaped my entire life. They were heroes in my eyes, but I also saw that they were very disempowered. They shrank back and they made themselves smaller. That shaped my existence as a child, and I knew that I wanted to change that. I knew I never wanted to see anybody feel disempowered. And so I spent 10 years working in public schools in Atlanta and DeKalb through a nonprofit education 
I started and work with young women. And that's where I really started to see the decisions that are made at the Capitol to defund our public school system, to deny people access to health insurance. At the front of this is recognizing that when civil liberties are under attack, um, I have to honor that legacy. My parents risking everything, risking their lives to come to America for, for those very same civil liberties that our 